Let me ask you, Ar Arvind, about another uh, area of uh, computing future. You mentioned it earlier, and that's quantum computing. It's uh, something that I have a particular interest in because I wrote a novel a couple of years ago called The Quantum Spy, which is a spy novel about U.S. and Chinese battles to, to dominate this technology. Give us your basic uh, primer on Quantum 101 why this form of computing is different from the uh, classical computing architecture that we know and, and what the potential is in terms of transforming how we do our computation. And David, that reminds me, it's one of the reasons I was so excited to get interviewed by you and talk to you is I do have my copy of the novel and I got to find a way to get it to you to get a signed copy. So, okay. but going on from there, um, Quantum computing is very different than today's computing. Today's computing is based on what we call digital bits, and those are perfect zeros or ones. So in a deterministic world, today's computers work great. Think about your bank account, think about uh, browsing information, etc. But we are running near the end of what Moore's law can do. Much as I talked about 40% performance improvement, there are many problems we cannot handle on today's uh, computers even down the road, uh, be it uh, materials, uh, be it certain risk computations, something as simple as the caffeine molecule, you cannot uh, uh, possibly model on today's supercomputers. So you step back and say, is there a technology that could do that? And that is what quantum computing can do. In quantum computing, uh, the underlying, I call it measure as opposed to bits, is qubits, uh, as in quantum bits. And these uh, work, I'll call it in a probabilistic realm. So they kind of model out what's happening in the physical world. And uh, problems in risk, problem in materials, like maybe a strong alloy for an airplane, or maybe in batteries, the better lithium technology, so I can make a battery that's 10 times or 100 times denser, are the kinds of problems that quantum computers will solve. Now, the underlying technologies on these are dramatically different. We talk about superconducting uh, semiconductors. We talk about trapped ions and other technologies like this. So going back to our first statement on two nanometers, semiconductor technologies still play a very important role, but a bit different than in classical computers. Where are we now? So talking about um, quantum uh, computers, we are in that range of 30, 50, 60, maybe 100 qubits right now, this year as we speak, as we look at ourselves and others who work on these technologies. We have put a roadmap out that by 2023, we expect to be on a thousand qubit computer. So 2023 or 2024, we are going to be able to start solving problems that could have a large impact. Now, there's some hard engineering challenges between now and then, reduce the errors in these machines, make sure they can stay up for long periods of time, uh, make sure that they are fully programmable, but I have confidence we're going to get there. And as we get there, problems in materials, problems in risk, problem in financial modeling, such as uh, pricing, maybe EV battery technology, then going down the ro road a little bit, problems around supply chain, how to minimize maybe fuel consumption, maybe weather predictions and modeling, though that's probably a bit, little bit harder are all problems that will be in the realm of quantum computers. And that means you bring so much value when we think about the climate change crisis, we think about lightweight materials, we think about EVs, so much promise in what these technologies are going to deliver to us a few years down the road. And it's now a few years, it's no longer a few decades.